Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going off to another spectacular part of the Gower Peninsula in Wales. Yes, we're going to shoot a lighthouse, some other things, and slowly descend into madness. Hmm, that's right. I think that the loneliness of van life has finally got to me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After a bleak and miserable start, it's gone all nice and lovely. Still a bit windy, but yeah, definitely nice and lovely. So, where am I going? I am going to the Whiteford Lighthouse. Yes, it's another lighthouse. <laughs> I think I'm getting a bit of an affinity for them. But this one, very dilapidated, uh, all the boardings are missing. It's, it's a bit like a, an iron construct that's waiting to be finished. Yeah, lovely, absolutely lovely place. But you can only get to it when the tide is out. So that's the plan. And as per usual, I'm running late. <laughs> standard now, eh? absolutely standard. So this what? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Five past one. Low tide is at uh, 2.36, but you only get an hour either side. So <laughs> I'm hoping I can get there in half an hour. I doubt it, but let's go. So, hopefully you've seen from the footage, <laughs> there is a car park up in the village. That is an honesty box car park, so if you do park there, please be honest. And uh, once you've got to that car park, it's just head back into the village, which is only a few yards, and then follow the trail down, and you'll either take the path that goes along the beach, or you'll take the path that goes through the woodland. Uh, it's kind of a circular, so you could do one out, one back. But uh, the interesting thing I've just been told, whether it's true or not, they seem local, is that in the woodland, there's a lot of ex-military stuff. Yeah, unexploded bombs, shell casings, said uh, don't pick them up because you might go bang. And apparently this should have been sorted a long time ago. So I'm going to go that way. Hmm, is it worth the risk? In fairness, I don't know where it goes, so I'm just going to follow the path that I need to to get to where I'm going. Let's crack on. And check these dead trees out, man. <laughs> I'm assuming this because they're growing in the um, salt water, so they've died. So it must have been land that wasn't breached before. Ah. Yeah. Politics of man. Hmm. Right, well that's enough of my moronic jabberings. <laughs> Let's get down to this beach. Well, here we go guys. We've got sand dunes. Where there's sand dunes, there's sand. <laughs> Which usually means there's a beach, so. We're there, but I just can't see this light out yet because it's all sand dunes. They're eyeballing me again. Oh man, this is going on forever. To the left of me is fenced off, so I can't cut across onto the beach. 
and it just seems like I'm heading miles and miles forwards. Hope I've come to the right place. So I've got some new mics to go on these phones I've got. I've got the Wise Old S21 and I've got my iPhone. I'm hoping they work. They were £22 each. <laughs> They're not exactly expensive. But uh, yeah, this is the test. Ah, oh, this looks like it. I think we're finally getting there. Breeze onto the beach. They could make a great subject of their own, but uh, it's not what I'm here. If anything, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and get a shot of those dead trees on my way back. Don't, not sure I can get an angle on them, though. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Come on. Out. Follow the sheep. <laughs> oh, I can see it. It's over there. It's over there. It's behind you. It's behind you. Turn around. Goodness sake, turn around. There it is. I know that's a bit ropey footage, but there it is. Right, so we still got a ways to go. Uh, I'm trying to keep you out of the wind. I think these cheap mics are going to struggle in the wind, but we need to crack on. We've got... ...30 minutes before the lowest tide. Yeah, I know, I should get a watch that you don't have to hit to make, make you see the tide. That would be good. I mean, it's a watch. You can't watch it, because it's dark. It's a blank screen. You seriously, you just can't watch it. Yeah. Yay, I'm on the beach. <laughs> and I can see the lighthouse. Can you? No, you can't because it's behind me. Or rather, it was in front of me. There it is. Just there. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> It's very windy, so uh, excuse the noise, but I'll explain to you what happened. So I set up for the shot and I was faffing around trying to get my exposure correct. And then I realized that the water I was using for my foreground interest kept moving in the composition. <laughs> yeah, that tide came in quick and is still coming in. So I've moved quite a distance away. Um, I literally just faffed around with my dials, got what I could out of it. Um, but yeah, I've moved away uh, and I've got a little composition here. <laughs> it's nothing special, but I quite like it. So you've got these three little, I don't know what they are. They're kind of like, um, I don't know, they're like jacks you put under a car. I'm assuming that you tie lobster pots to them or something or mussel pots, but you've got those three there. And then you've got the lighthouse in the background. Right. Foot's cracked up. So, yeah. I found a pretty rock. Turn out. Reds, orange, yellows, they're pretty. Yeah, all right, I am at relative safety. And when I say relative, I'm more at risk from myself than I am from the sea. 
Okay, I'll try and talk you through what I did. So the idea was for the first shot, picture of the lighthouse, long exposure, streaking clouds, black and white, reflection in the foreground was what I was hoping for, but that was never gonna happen in the wind. So the long exposure was the shot. So today was clearly a lesson in timing, Steve. Let's see how many of your goals you actually managed to achieve because you turned up too late. So firstly, long exposure, streaking clouds, black and white, reflections in the foreground. The last one you did explain you wouldn't have got anyway. <laughs> Good job, Steve. Yeah. Now, I kind of was faffing around with my exposure because I was trying to calculate it. Uh, I cocked it up and I overexposed a couple. Then I realized that the water in the scene kept changing. I was trying to get it to come in from the leading edge, which is here, and come up round through the shot to the lighthouse. Uh, and no, it was suddenly over here, going round to the lighthouse. I'm like, hang on a minute, this isn't right. Hmm, okay, I think this is coming in quick. And it was. So as soon as I go off around the headland, the wind, oh, man, it's picking up. But you can already see the estuary there. It's starting to fill up. Yeah, it's not going to be long until this is all underwater. The biggest problem is where the lighthouse is, yeah, there, somewhere there, the elevation difference between that lighthouse and about this point here is a matter of a couple of feet. There's not much in it. So as soon as that lighthouse goes underwater, it is not long until everything up to this point here is underwater so that's the risk but i'm safe i'm sound i haven't drowned and i'm a poet and i don't know it <laughs> yeah so we live for another day let's go and get some shots of those dead trees Well, I don't know if I'm the only lunatic in the asylum, but there's no one else here. This is how I like it. Really hoping that the audio off these mics is working fine. They do pick up a lot of noise. They do pick up, they're very loud, so it should be fine. I should be able to tone them down in post-production and take a bit of the wind noise out. Hopefully they work. They're amazing. I bloody hate that little pocket thing. It's forever losing footage because I can't see the size of the screen. Hook it up to your phone, it becomes a faff to play with. Yeah, I'm a technophobe. So, because I'm beautiful enough and God decided that he wasn't going to cover anything up and give me hair... Uh, I've got no evidence that it actually really is windy apart from the noise that you get on these mics, to be honest. And it could just be me going... So I thought we'd ask a couple of locals. Does it really get windy in this section of the coast? So, Mr. Tree, Mr. Tree? Oh no, he's fallen over. Now, I've got to admit, standing by those trees over there, that's a bit ominous. They are moving around so much. It's no wonder they're all falling down. Wow. Wouldn't go, well, I wouldn't go wandering through those woods. So I would imagine that uh, this whole area behind me originally was covered in these pines and they're just slowly, slowly falling down and exposing more of the area to become beach. Yeah. 
looks like some have been deliberately chopped as well. So maybe there's a bit of man intervention to go along with it. Yeah, shame. So I'm walking along the path here and I thought, I can hear a recorder. And I had flashbacks to Wisman's Wood when the hippies were getting stoned and playing on their recorders. Badly. Turns out, it's the gate. Musical gates. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I've just been on my own too long and I'm going a bit do lally pap. It's possible. I really don't like walking through these trees, you know. They look like they're going to fall on you at any minute. This is freaky, man. Proper freaky. Ah. Yeah. They can move quick. Now, I do understand that a tree has a big root system and it's designed to flex as it goes along in the wind. But uh, if, they, if I didn't have so many that had already fallen over, I'd probably be a little bit more confident. So when you come here, your choices are be killed by fallen tree, be blown up by unexploded mines and shrapnel in the woods, or to get trapped and drowned at sea. So there's, there's one for the tourist information board. Let's sell the Gower Peninsula for them. Oh man. <laughs> well, thankfully we've come out of those big tall trees now and we're uh, surrounded by some rowan oaks. Very, very pretty. Lots of red berries everywhere. Well, I'm calling them rowan oaks. For all I know, they could be strawberries yeah leave a comment for me let me know tell me what's what i'd appreciate it so finally the trees are in sight i did think i'd not lost i'll be quite honest The dead trees behind this group of trees behind me here and it looks like there's a little path going down there if you can see it over my shoulder i'm going to be tripod in my hands over there and that should give me a clear shot of the trees total bomb vest <laughs> still i'm wearing wellies and there is a sign over there so i got a funny feeling this path is closed Yep, denied. Just have to keep following the other path. Hopefully I can get a clear shot from there. So I've kind of found an opening here, but I uh, can't really get an angle on it I like, I'll be quite honest. There's a fence and some fallen trees just halfway through the shot and they get right in the base of the photo. So I'm gonna go handheld, see if I can pick something out. But the further I move down, the more I'm bringing the sky into the subject and I really didn't want any sky at all. I wanted to be stood, stood further back, zoom in and use those green trees as a dark background. So uh, let's see what we can do, see what magic we can perform. Oh yeah, not good. <laughs> So 
so I couldn't resist having a go at this little beauty in front of me as well. Hopefully this has come out because I did it handheld at about 30th of the second, which is, yeah, quite a feat on my camera. Ah. Well, the light's fading, it's starting to spit with rain. So that's all from me here at Whiteford in the Gower. Ah, another stunning location. Hope these mics have held up. Yeah, if they haven't, then you're just going to be watching this with me going. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. And smash that like and subscribe button. Do me a solid. Go on. I know you want to. You probably don't, but I'd appreciate it if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you the next time. I'm getting back to the van. I'm starving. It's gone six o'clock, man.